by, written by uh, John and presented by John. A goodbye to you. Some of these lines are somewhat predictable, so please join in. <laughs> and now, if you're sitting comfortably, then we'll... Very good. Very good. This is yes, folks, you've had the play. It's now sincerity time to pay tribute to our departing members. And insult them, all in rhyme. <laughs> I've heard about your little city. I'm not sure I'm very keen. I just take poetic license. You take liberties, you mean. If you're going to insult my friends, I don't want any part. Oh, Mary, don't make a fuss. I'll behave. Cross my heart. Okay. But no derogatory remarks. Did I not promise just now? No one you want those are calling people names? Get on, you silly cow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's goodbye to two fine actors, which is a terrible pity. It's goodbye to a fine producer and to members of committee. We say goodbye to just one mother and three men. The total's now nine. We bid adieu to a man of spirits and one who deals in wine. <laughs> Monsalama to two married couples. And one who's happy. <laughs> and three. We count the departing backstage folk. The number comes to three. So far, that's 17 people. That's really more than plenty. Throw in two ladies and a lighting man, and the number comes to 20. There's two who dabble in computers. There's one in avionics. There's four who like to tipple wine, and one is in Thomas. <laughs> There's a sewing, singing teacher who's big in the arts. <laughs> There's a sewing, singing teacher who's big in the arts. There's a devoted snooker player who likes playing... Oh. Fast. <laughs> There's one with a London accent. There's four who speak quite posh. There's two who like a game of bridge and one who's fond of squash. There's one who's very nautical. And at least one who's very naughty. That's an awful lot of people. The number now is 40. <laughs> 40 people leaving... That's enough to fill a bus. But it's not the first time that we faced a mass exodus. <laughs> anyway, I found some double accounting. The number's only five. And though they're indispensable, Oki will survive. Oki used to be mainly American. Then the British made a coup. Excuse me, it's French. It should be coup. Coup? Not coup? <laughs> RP <laughs> used to be American, then the British made a coup. And now the Brits are leaving, five and one fell, swoop. <laughs> so what will become of the membership? Who will it next comprise? Well, if it goes the way of them, it'll be entirely. <laughs> Anyway, who are these five people? Who will pretty soon be gone? It's time for us to name them. And insult them, one by one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Jill, a talented actress, a girl of many parts. Oh, she plays a really marvelous drunk. One who hiccups, burps, and... <laughs> <laughs> falls over. <laughs> Jill's been in so many plays. Captain Friends was a nice piece. Ah, yes, Diana. She only wanted one affair. The entire Canadian mounted police. <laughs> she was in Shakespeare's Ladies and in What the Butler Saw and two parts in the Comedy Hour and she still came back for more. Yes, tonight she played a local girl. <laughs> Though somewhat satirically. While swigging back the lager, she waxed and waned lyrically. Oh, Lord of the Rings! And other naughty bits. Oh, beloved of my bosom. Oh, admirer of my... <laughs> armpits. And in Move Over Mrs. Markham, she really can't go wrong. All tweedy drawers and sensible shoes, it'll be her great swan song. That's where she has a man that does. Which is somewhat ironic, because Martin would like to, but usually can't, after a night on the Satanic. <laughs> Are you saying this 
connubial duties he is fa failing to fulfill? I'm just saying that once he said yes to a pint, he always says no to a dill. <laughs> Martin really loves his wife. Then he should really love her first. It's not his fault, it's just that he has a most prodigious thirst. <laughs> but he must be a man that does every now and then. Of course, he, he's done it three times. Emma, Kit, and Ben. <laughs> no, I'm not having it. Oh, you as well, huh? <laughs> Think of something nice to say. Um, we're really glad there's a few more months before he finally retires, and he's going to be a tremendous loss to the local suppliers. <coughs> he's been a great help to them, and I must say, quite ingeniously. Now look, Martin doesn't drink that much. What? He takes it intravenously? <laughs> <laughs> Martin's made a marvelous contribution to the theater life. Yeah, when he went boozing at the docks, he sent along his wife. <laughs> no, I mean, he's contributed a great deal to the theaters of this town. Ah, oh, yes. I remember his two cultured acts of drama. Bollocks meets Charlie Brown. <laughs> I really think you've said enough. You're all the same, you men. You never mentioned Martin's producing skills. I did. Emma, Chris, and Ben. <laughs> oh, I give up. Let's turn to David March. Now, this time you mustn't kid. David's very fond of squash. He'll drink anything with him. <laughs> but it was his work on the Victorian evening where he really made his mark. He's a first-class lighting man. Who's kept completely in the dark. <laughs> oh, you mean the ladies' night, when he lay flat on the ground, afraid to move a muscle, afraid to make a sound? Trying to work those switches must have really been a drag. <laughs> and it must have been so very hot inside that plastic bag. <laughs> It's just unfortunate. He was discovered to make all the clothes with all the No, I mean now is the only one. Wasn't your role tonight really good? Perhaps even better than Jill. And playing a sex path. That took no acting skills. And she's doing a really super job with all the with the Elizabethan street. Yeah, it's like coitus interruptus. Nice but incomplete. <laughs> Whenever there's a job to do, in she always pitches. And as our jolly wardrobe lady, she keeps us all in stitches. Yes, Anne's a real comedian. The best of all the wits. She's the one who tries to name this lovely room the pits. Which brings us on to Vincent, who can't escape all blame. Was he not the MC who allowed that awful name? Vincent's our seagoing member. We'd like to cast off daily. Yes, as Dennis Healy would have it. He is our Sally Bailey. <laughs> no one could doubt his acting skills, not even a doubting Thomas. And when it comes to building bars, I've heard he shows lots of promise. <laughs> <laughs> but in making stock for the bar, for pe perfection he has striven. Yes, we thank him for those lovely grapes and the spirit <laughs> in which they're given. Vince has been here just one year. No one could say he stalled. Yeah, he hadn't even put his first batch down when he was in Inspector Cole's. <laughs> was he not in the ghost train and a comedy hour and a bit? And he even wrote the play tonight. Another resounding hit. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the Victorian evening and the engineer in Eddie's play. And I've heard he popped a feed, but just to collect his pay. <laughs> <laughs> He's certainly been a busy chap. Well, that's very true. If you ask Lockheed about him, they say, Vincent who? <laughs> he just likes an active social life, a man about the town. Which is why they turned his money back and closed his winery down. <laughs> right. Now you've insulted everyone. What have you got to say? I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry you made me throw all the best bits away. <laughs> I wanted to tell him about the... Uh, That's enough? That will do? It's time for Roy to make his speech. Can we spare an hour or two? <laughs> I'd like to end on a personal note. Working with you has been a real joy, and I wish you all the very best as I hand you on to Roy.